it says an archer shoots an arrow horizontally. So here we go. Somebody shoots an arrow horizontally. Horizontally means in the x direction. At a target, 15 meters away. So there's a target here. Let's say there's the bullseye. That distance from here to there is 15 meters. To the center of the bullseye here is 15 meters. The arrow is aimed directly at the center of the target. It was aimed right there, but hits 57 centimeters below the, below the bullseye. So it didn't hit it right there. It stuck right there, the arrow. So that gap there, the drop here, is 0.57 below that meters. That's 57 centimeters, which is 0.57 meters. And the question is, what is the initial speed? What is the initial speed of that archer? Or that arrow, bow, whatever they use in there. An arrow. Yep. I don't know if it's 15 meters or 16 meters. I can't really tell when I look at it here. I think it's 15 meters away. Yep. Okay. Let's write what we know. Remember, this is actually motion in two dimensions. So you got to take the problem, break it down to x and y component. And y component. In the x component, what do we know? We know the distance x to be what? 15 meters. The initial velocity is unknown. We're looking for it. And if you remember, there's only one equation in the x direction. What's that equation? x equals what? v0 times t. So if you know two things, you can find the third thing. I'm looking for what? V0. If I'm looking for V0, that means I need X and I need T. Do we have X and T? No, we only have X, right? We don't have what T is. We're looking for it. So if I can find what T is, I'm in good shape. Let's look at the Y direction. What do we know? Tell me everything you know about Y. So he was aiming the bow in that direction or the arrow in that direction. He fired it or she fired it. It went like this. Travel like this. It went down. That's what happened to it. That's why it landed right there. So what do we know? What was the initial velocity in the Y direction? We do know. We do. Zero. Zero. Is that you, Jason? Yes. Good. Zero. Because horizontal. There is no y direction. If you want to use break it down to x and y component, go ahead. It's v zero sine of zero. What is sine of zero? Zero. So it has no initial velocity in the y direction. It wasn't fired up. It wasn't fired down. It was straight out. What else do we know? There's a few other things we know. Gravity. gravity, okay, the acceleration, which is gravity, and we're using down is negative. Up is positive, down is negative. What else do we know? Distance. What distance? <clears throat> the distance from the this one? Yeah. Well, that's in the x direction, oh. right? That's going this way. I'm talking about up and down. Oh, the, the distance. Okay. This. What are you gonna use for reference? You want to use the height where you fire from as reference? Okay. If you use the initial height as reference, that dotted line, all the way to the bullseye, 
What's your initial height? Is it negative? No. Zero. Zero. Initially, where was the bows? Right here, at that dotted line. What was the final height? Negative, negative five, 0.57, very good. Because it traveled down. Can we find the time? Is there an equation that will allow us to find the time? I think this one, y equals y sub zero plus v zero t plus one half g t squared will be a good one to use. It has all the pieces that we need. What is y? Negative 0.57, y sub zero is zero, v sub zero is zero, zero times anything is zero. This will be negative a half times four uh, a half times nine point eight is what? Is that four point nine? Again, the four point nine is one half times nine point eight. Now you divide both sides by negative four point nine. Point five seven divided by 4.9 is 0.116. Take the square root of that. Point 0.34 if you want to use two significant digits. So the error was in the air for 0.34 seconds. If I know that, I can come back with it now and plug it in. Now, I wrote 0.34, but I'm really carrying all the digits. Notice all my digits are on the calculator. So I'm going to leave them all there. So that's why sometimes your answer doesn't match my good. I get a little bit off because I'm using all the digits. So 15 divided by that number, 15 divided by 0 0.3401, whatever, one something, and the result is the initial velocity is 43.98. Since we are using two significant digits here, so the initial velocity is what? 44 meters per second. And let's see if we are right. The initial velocity in the x direction, 44, submit. Waiting for the answer? Correct. Any question on this one? Um, when I square rooted point one one six, you gave me point zero one three. You took the square root instead of squaring. You did the square instead of square root. So make sure you use the hook, not the square there on that one, Jason. Should get bigger when you take the square root. You know how we have the x squared? Right above it, there's the square root. You have to hit the second key. So 0.116, hit the second, and x squared. Yep. Any of the buttons on the top, you have to hit the shift key or the second key. Okay. That's 410. Any other questions? Don't be shy. Just ask them. Let's look at 431. Let me find it. Here we go. Okay, we have a bottle of champagne, here we go. You're celebrating, you finished your physics class. You bought, bought a bottle of champagne, loosen the wire, push the cork, and it goes flying.
goes in that direction, the cork goes flying. At an angle of 42 degrees above the horizontal. So they're telling us this angle is 42 degrees. If the cork travels a horizontal distance, so the cork goes in the air like this. Now the assumption, which they're not saying anything about it, where did the cork land? You know? We don't know anything about it. You know? All we know, the cork traveled 1.2 meters in 1.3 seconds. I could be right here. Maybe somebody grabbed it right up in the air here. It doesn't have to be the same height. It could be down on the ground. We have no idea. It doesn't say anything about where the person caught that cork, right? So let me make, draw it like it's not even the same height. I, and I have no idea if it's the same height or not. It's like the fireworks coming up the 4th of July. When they fire the fireworks, they explode in the sky. Somewhere in the sky, they're gonna explode. So that's the end of that projectile there. Then it goes into 10,000 pieces. So this is somewhere up here. All we know, the distance travel, like if you draw a horizontal line from here to here, that distance is what? 1.2 meters. One point two zero meters, they're using three significant digits. Because this is forty two point zero. So one point two zero meters. And the time it took is one point three zero seconds. What is the initial speed? So initially, this was fired in this direction as initial speed V0. Projectile again. X component. Y component. Notice this is not horizontal. You didn't fire it horizontally. So what is your initial speed in the x direction? I'm going to call it x direction. Because if I say v0, you're going to tell me it's that value. I'm not talking about that number. This is not known. You know what? Instead of calling it actually v0, let's call it what? Uh, v? What's that velocity? We know the direction is 42. So what is the initial speed in the x direction? I don't want you to get confused with the V0 there. It has some velocity here and it has 42 degree angle. I don't know what the velocity or the value of that, I'm looking for it. So what is the initial speed in the X direction? Initial. Yep, what is it? Zero. No, if it's zero, it won't travel in this way, right? You gotta have more, because it's traveling this direction, that means it's more than zero. And in the y direction, it's more than zero because you went upward. What is the initial value? It might not be a number, but what is it? How do we figure that value? Some of the 42 degrees are gonna be involved. It's whatever the speed in that direction, which we called it v, or v0, whatever you wanna call it times the cosine of the 42 degrees. And what was the initial speed in the y direction? V times the sine of 42 degrees. I know what cosine 42, I can go to my calculator and figure what that number up. Cosine, oh, Cosine 42 degrees. See what that number is. 0.743. So it's 0.743 times V. In the Y direction, what is the sine of 42? Point 
0.669. In the x direction, I know the distance x traveled, which is what? 1.20. I know the time, which is what? 1.30 second. And there's only one equation. X equals the initial velocity in the X direction times the time. Do we know what X is? 1.20. Do we know what the initial velocity in the X direction? 0.743 times V. Do we know what the time is? Time is what? 1.30. How many unknowns in that? One. I can solve for V, and that's what the question is. I don't even need to use the Y direction. They're not asking for it. So you multiply 0 0.743 times 1.30, 0 0.9659, times v equals 1.20 can we figure what v is 1.20 divided by that number 1.24 and since all the number three significant digits my initial velocity upward not in the x direction on that when I left that bottle of champagne is 1.24 meters per second. Check my answer. Correct. So you have to pay attention in this case to the y direction. They give us too much information to solve it. But your initial velocity always, if it's not horizontal, it's whatever this value times the cosine of 42 in the y direction, whatever this value times the sine of 42. Let's look at 4.47. Four point four seven. The question reads, it's a basketball game. LeBron James will say. Passes the ball. Good game last night, I get to watch it. Passes the ball to another player who catches it at the same level, the same height. Well, if you catch at the same height, that tells me when LeBron James passed the ball to me. See, he had that. There's LeBron, wearing his hat still while he's playing. There is me, catching the ball. I should have had his hand pushing the ball out, actually. There's the ball. If I'm going to catch the ball at the same height, I'm going to catch it right at the same height, the only way that will happen if the ball travels up in the air. So he has to shoot it with some initial velocity in the y direction. If you remember from that archer there, if you fire it straight, horizontally, what will happen? You will not catch it right there. It's going to dip down. So the fact that person caught the ball at the same height, that tells me the ball was fired in this direction. That's the ball, the velocity. Now I didn't say anything about that initial velocity yet. The initial speed of the ball was 7.5 meters per second. 7.5 has angle theta. They're not telling us what theta is. Our job to find theta here. And the distance traveled is 4.4 meters.
What's the initial direction of the ball? What is theta? That's what we're looking for. Again, projectile, always going to break it down, x component, y component. The x component, let's see what we know. What is the initial velocity? Go ahead. 7.5. 7.5? Try again. It's not zero. If it's zero, it won't go horizontal, it won't go in the x direction. It's not 7.5. It like cosine, cosine. 7.5 cosine what? Theta. Anytime it's on an angle, it's always the cosine. In the y direction, what's the initial velocity? 7.5 sine. You've got to somehow put this in your head because on the test tomorrow, I'm not going to be telling you that. The only time we don't use a sine cosine when it's horizontal. You fire something horizontally. Then that's the x value, no y value. But once it goes up or down like this, travel, we know there's an x value and a y value. The x is always the cosine. The y is always the sine. So somehow you've got to remember, figure out a way to remember it. We're looking for theta, right? We also know the distance x. x traveled is what? 4.4 meters. Another thing, like if you're not sure during the test, if the ball travels in that direction, that tells you the initial velocity can't be zero, because if it's zero, it doesn't go in that direction. So that's another way of saying it can't be zero. If the ball goes up there, the initial velocity in the y direction can't be zero. It went up there. Something has to push it up there. So these little things to pay attention to. And the time is not given to us, unknown. And you know there's only one equation in the x direction, that's x equals what? V zero times t. And if I fill in the blank for them, I know what x is what? 7.5 times cosine theta equals V zero. Oh, I'm sorry, I put it in the wrong place. X is what? Isn't it 44? 4.4, I mean. 4.4 equals 7.5 cosine theta times what? Times t. How many unknowns in that equation when you look at it? I see two unknowns, right? None of us in this room can solve one equation with two unknowns. And that includes me. And I'm really good with numbers in math. We can't. So I need to know one of them. Well, since I'm looking for theta, to find theta, maybe I need the time. Let's look at the y direction. What do we know about the y direction? If I use this height as reference, where the ball was fired from and the person coded at this height, let's see what we know. We know the initial velocity is what? 7.5 sine theta. We know the acceleration, which is gravity, which is what? Negative 9.8. What else do we know? We know the initial height to be what? Zero. We know the final height to be what? Zero. Can I find the time? Because I'm looking for the time. <laughs> Can I use y equals y sub 0 plus v 0 t plus 1 half g t squared? Would that help me? Maybe. Maybe, maybe not. I'm not sure. This is not an easy one mathematically. Not physics, math, you'll see the math. y is what? 0 equals 0. What was the initial height? 7.5 sine theta times t. This becomes negative what? 4.9 <coughs> t squared. Bless you.
Hmm. I can't solve it for you. How many unknowns here? Two. Two. And how many unknowns in this? How many equations do we have? We have two equations by two unknowns. The first one says what? 4.4 equals 7.5 cosine theta times t. And the second one says what? 0 e equals 7.5 <coughs> sine of theta times t minus 4.9t squared. And somehow I gotta do this mathematics, solve it. Mm. Not a nice one. So the physics I'm done with it, how would I solve this mathematically? I can factor a t out, okay. If I factor a t out, I'll take that. What do you have? You have 7.5 sine theta t, uh, theta, t is gone, right? I factor the t out. Minus what? 4.9 t. Now you're multiplying two things, you want your answer to be zero. This is one equation, let's keep it here. You're multiplying two things and you want your answer to be zero, right? So either t is zero or 7.5 sine theta minus 4.9t has to equal to zero. It's either this one zero or that one zero. Why? You're multiplying two things and you want your answer to be zero. That means one of them is zero. Well, zero, that's silly. That's when the guy, when LeBron James had the ball in his hand. I'm looking for the time I caught the ball from him. That's the zero time right here. So that's why I'm not paying attention to this. I'm looking for that time. So this is the piece I'm looking for. Still does not allow me to solve for t because if I take this and solve it for t, <clears throat> that equation says what? The bottom one, 4.9t, I'm taking the minus to this side, making it a plus, equals what? 7.5 sine theta, right? And to solve for t, what do you do? You divide both sides by 4.9. What's 7.5 divided by 4.9? 1.53 sine theta. So it really didn't give me an answer. Okay, mm. well we have another equation right there. Can you see that equation? When you have two equations by two unknowns, remember how we solve them? We solve for one of the variables in terms of the other one, that's called the substitution method. That's what we did. We took the second equation, we solved for t in terms of the other one. Now go back to the other equation, replace t with this value. The 1.53? Yeah. 7.5 divided by 4.9. Divided by 4.9. Right? So I solved for t. I just took the second equation. I didn't touch the first one yet. I took this equation, we called equation number two. So I have two equations by two unknowns. I took equation number two, solved it for t. Now, let me go back to equation number one. And now replace t by the value of that. What is t equal to? t equals to what? This number.
cosine theta times t in place of t I'm gonna put where's my red marker come back here in place of t I'm gonna replace it by 1.53 sine theta that's this value that's what t is equal to So if I do the math, I can multiply these two numbers together and make it one number. So what is 7.5 times 1.53? I got 11.48 cosine theta sine theta equals 4.4. Now I'm going to divide both sides of the equation. As I said, the math is really ugly. Cancels this. Point three eight three equals cosine theta sine theta. And now, good luck solving this. Unless you look at the board, this is my tech math class. Equation 15 on the board. See equation 15? It says do not erase. It says what? Sine twice alpha equals two sine alpha cosine alpha. which means sine alpha cosine alpha is equal to sine 2 alpha divided by 2. If I use that substitution here, I can replace the right side here by sine 2 theta divided by 2 equals 0.383. Multiply by 2 to get rid of the fraction. Point 0.7665, I'm carrying all the digits, it's sine 2 theta, which means 2 theta equals what? inverse sine. So that's the shift key just on your calc there. Second sine of that number which is 50 degrees. 50.05 So to get theta would be what? 25 degrees. Now in this case you really have more than one answer. Math is fun with this. Let me show you actually why you have more than one answer. I'll wait till you finish writing. If you graph sine of theta, if I take sine of theta and graph it, I don't know if you remember what the graph of sine theta looks like, but sine theta graph looks like this. It goes as high as 1, as low as negative 1, Right there. This is pi, or 3, 180 degrees, if we're using degrees here. We'll use degrees. This is 180. This is 360. This one, the 90 degrees, the peak value. This is the 270. 
the height is 1 here, the height is negative 1 here. This is a 0 degree. This is sine theta. If you did 2 theta here, what will happen, instead of having one of those shapes here, you will have two of them. So your graph will look like this. This is one. This is two. This is the top one, the red one, is sine 2 theta. You'll have two shapes. So when we get to this point, and we said 2 theta equals 50 degrees or theta equals 25, we're looking for the sine to be 0.76. <coughs> so if you draw 0.76 here instead of a 1, you draw this line. We need to know where does the function intersect at. This is the point 0.76. If we're talking about sine theta, that's this one here, which is the 50 degrees we found it. And there's really another one. Oh, there's no, well, there's one here, right? And what is that value? That's a 50 here. Doesn't look like I wrote 50, I wrote them sideways. And what's that number? Well, this is symmetric. If from here to there is 50 degrees, what's that distance from here to there? 50, that would be what, 130? Now, the red one is going to be different. The red one is half of that. We said 30 degrees. I mean 25, not 30. Half of 50 is 25. There is another one that's right here. What's that number? 90 minus the 25. Because that distance from here to there is 25. That means this is 25. What's 90 minus 25? Is that 75? There is another one right here, which is 25 more than the 180. See the 180 here? That's the 180. Add to it 25. All these are symmetric. What's 25 more than 180? Is that 205? The next one is right here. What's that number? This is 270. 270, take away from it 25. What do we have? Is it 245? There are four answers to that question. It says, uh, what are the initial value? Express your answer using two significant figures. If there is more than one answer, separate by comma. Let me write, I don't know how many of these answers they wanted. Let me write the 25 and the 75, the first two. Now it can't be the other two, the 205, why? If I'm looking at you, I gotta pass the ball 25 degrees or 75, because if I go 225, which way I'm putting the ball? Behind me. So physically, I can't do that. If you're in front of me, I wanna give you the ball, I can't throw the ball behind me. Because just, if you picture my body, my height is my y-axis, my waist, is my x-axis. I gotta give it to you this way or that way up in there have it come to you. 225 will be behind me, behind my back. I'm throwing the ball. Well, behind my back, you're not gonna get it. So physically, there are two answers, 25 and 75. 25 comma 75. Mathematically, there are four answers, but two of them don't make any sense. And it says, I got them wrong.
I give up. Let's see what the answers are. Are you sure? Yes. Oh, 25 and 65. What is 90 minus 25? 65. Yep. That's 75. Right? 90 minus the 25? 65. So I did get the first one. I didn't get the second one. 65. I subtracted wrong. Told you I'm not good with the basic math. So we have two answers to that. 25 and 65. So theta, the solution, is 25 comma 65. There are two answers. And that's the reason behind it. There's two values. That's probably the hardest one. You probably see the whole semester in terms of math. Now, the book might give you a shortcut. I don't know if there's something in the back of the book. In physics, they always do that. Just plug into this equation, there's your answer. But if you want to see the math and the physics behind it, you got to go through all that, including you better know some trig identity. If you don't know that trig identity, you can sit here for a month. You will never get that answer. Because you can solve this without knowing that trig identity. And I was about to erase them today. Is there going to be a question like that? I hope not. <laughs> We have one more. I know you're getting tired. And hopefully it's not as bad as this one. 4.48. Oh, are you going to do part B of that? Of 4.47 or no? There's a part B? Yep. It wants to know Suppose where you? the time of the flight was. Oh. Oh, and... Um, I had a different number of mine than yours, and I was trying to see how I'm supposed to come up with the second answer. Like, you got 25 degrees and 65 degrees, but your numbers are different. Yeah, they take the 90 minus that number. Once you get the first answer, take 90 minus that number. Part, so there's a part B to that one. It says, um, what is... What was the time in flight? Well, if you use the 25, because you have the equation now, right? What is the first equation? Any one of them. T equals 1.53 sine theta, right? So if I use that one, and again, the reason you get two answers is, I'm going to show you the picture, picture-wise. You can throw the ball like this, right? And you catch it right here. Or you can throw it really high like this. You catch it right there. You know, throw it up in there. So do you think the time for this will be the same as the time for that? Probably not. Let's see. We know the equation for time is what? 1.53. I'm using that any one of them, but I use that one. That's a simple one, straightforward. So when theta is 15, what's the time? The time is 1.53, I'm using theta equals 50, uh, 25, not 15, I'm sorry, 25. Sine 25. So let's see what that number, 1.5, oh, 1.53 times the sine of 25. And it says 0.65 seconds, two significant digits. Yep. <coughs> and what about if I use that 65 degree angle? How much time? Time equals 1.53 sine of 65. One point three eight two significant digit one point four second. So I have two answers. I have the point six five and the one point four. Point six five comma. Where's the comma? One point four.
correct. So you can, a little angle here, that's one option. The other one, throw it way up in the air and have them wait and wait and wait and wait for it. Then it comes back, then you catch it. 1.4 second. So that's the part B of it. Let's look at 4.48. Oh, I'm looking at the book, I don't know why. I'm looking there. 4.48. A golf ball. Good. It's struck with uh, five iron on a level ground. Okay. It lands 91.8 meters away. Okay, that might be another math, tough math one. So we have a golf ball, somebody hits a golf ball and travels, and it really doesn't say it landed, the ground was even, it's a bunker, it doesn't say anything about it. So it landed somewhere there. I have no idea if it landed on the same level. Sometimes the course is a dip in it, gonna land higher, sometimes there's a little like, lower area ridge there. I'm not sure where it landed. It doesn't say about the height where it landed. But what we know, a golf ball struck with the five iron on level ground. It lands 91.8 meters away. So this, where it landed, right here, not a roll, the minute it land here, 91.8, I said, yep, that's three <coughs> significant digits. The time is 4.10 seconds. That's X here. The time, 4.10 second. What was the direction and the magnitude of the initial velocity? Uh-uh. That looks like the same type of problem. We're looking for the value of this velocity and we're looking for theta. Probably the same thing. Oh, you know what? It's saying level ground. So I think the assumption here is what? What do you think the assumption is says level ground? The ball landed where? Same height, right? So if I use this as reference, let's see what we know, x direction, y direction. In the x direction, what's the initial velocity? I'll give you a hint, it's not zero. Um, co the cosine of the theta? Times what? Uh, the distance. Yeah. Initial velocity, so it has to be a velocity, oh, so not distance. V, v so it's V times the cosine of theta. Both unknowns. In the y direction, the initial velocity is what? V times the sine of theta. What else do we know? We know X, which is what? 91.8 meters. We know the time, which is what? 4.10. This might not be bad mathematically. The math might not be that bad. We have one direct, one equation, the x direction, that's what? X equals the initial velocity times t. V 
cosine theta uh, x equals should buy stocks in these x is what 91.8 equals the initial velocity which is what v cosine theta times the time which is 4.10 how many unknowns do you see in that equation two two, two unknowns so I really can't solve it I need something else I need to come up with either another equation or no V or no theta we know what the time is let's look at the y direction maybe that will help us we know the initial height is what zero we know the final height is what zero we know the acceleration which is what negative 9.8 we know the time, which is what? 4.10 second. That time doesn't matter, x or y, is the same time. That's the time the ball was in the air. Is there an equation we can use? Probably the same one. y is 0, 0, initial velocity v sine theta times the time, which is what, 4.1? This would be minus 4.9 times 4.1 squared. Zero equals 4.1 V sine theta minus, let's see what that number is, 4.9 times 4.1 squared. That's 82.369. Clean it. 82.4, I'll use three significant digits equals 4.1 v sine theta. Here is one equation. Here is another equation. You see him? The physics is done. My physics is over now. What's left is my math. How would I solve these two equations? So I'm done with the physics. I'm going to write them on top of the next page and throw this one in the trash. I don't need it. It reads what? 4.1 V sine theta equals 82.4. That's one of the equations. doesn't matter which one you write first. And the other one reads what? 4.1 V cosine theta equals 91.8. That's my two equations, right? In algebra it says what? Solve for one of the variables and plug it in. I can solve for V from this one, come back here and plug it in. Or, I just noticed something by looking at it. I can do what I did the other one, solve for and plug in. But if I take the two equations and divide them, divide the two equations, what will happen? This 4.1 cancels that 4.1. This V cancels that V. What is sine divided by a cosine? Look at equation number three on the board. Sine over cosine is what? Tangent theta. Tangent theta equals, let's divide the two numbers, 82.4 
divided by 91.8, 0.8976. And to get theta, what do we do? Is it the inverse tangent? So do the inverse tangent, which is 41.9 degrees. So the first question is, give me theta. And all my numbers are looks like three significant digits. So I'm going to put 41.9. Let's see if we are right. Submit. Correct. Once I get theta, I can take either one of those equations. Doesn't matter which one. And solve for V, because that's the second part. What was the initial velocity? Either equation. So if I take the top one, no reason why I chose the top. Really no reason for that. I just picked that. Plug in now 41.9 for theta. Now, if I go to my calculator and find the sine of 41.9.668, this is 0.667 or 80 actually. I can multiply that by the 4.1. Two point seven three nine times V equals eighty two point four. Can we get what V is? Eighty two point four divided by that number. Thirty point one. If you want three significant thirty point zero nine, which is thirty point one meters per second. So that ball was struck with the value of 30.1, 30.1 meters per second, correct.